Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be discussing turbo machine similarity laws. These laws allow us to relate two different pumps or two different turbines that have the same geometry, but maybe running at a different rotational speed or maybe just have a different size. So there are two of these that we're going to be talking about today. The first of which is called the flow coefficient. So as you would expect, this is talking about the volumetric flow rate. And it says that our Q divided by omega D is constant. And of course, another way of writing that is to say that the Q over omega D cubed for one pump or one turbine is the same as the same ratio for another. Now, just a quick note, this is dimensionless. Our Q1 is meter cubed per second, and then D1, of course, is meters cubed, and then omega is radians per second, but radians is unitless, so that's just a per second. So we end up with meters cubed per second divided by meters cubed per second. Our other coefficient is the head coefficient. And this one is talking about the head of the pump. And for this one, we get it as h over omega squared d squared. Now you may notice that this is not unitless. We have units of meters over meters squared per second squared. Really what this is doing, it is comparing the energy and the potential energy, right, which is gh by some velocity squared or some uh, kinetic energy. So it's a ratio of potential energy to kinetic energy. So whenever we put these gravity terms in here, it actually makes our units work out. We usually just omit them because we're typically working on the same gravity whenever we change our pump. The gravity very rarely changes. So what do we get if we use these similarity laws? One way to use them is to ask the question, what happens to our pump curve if we change one of these parameters? If we change our omega and leave everything else the same, how does our pump curve react? So in order to investigate that, let's draw a little sample pump curve and then investigate a single point on that pump curve. So this pump is operating at some omega one and the pump impeller has some diameter. So we could change either of these values and our pump curve would change. But let's stick with our omega value and see how that affects our pump curve. So if we said that we're gonna slow this down and set our omega two to one half our omega one while keeping our diameter, our size the same, Let's figure out what that does with these two coefficients. For our flow coefficient, the right hand <clears throat> for our flow coefficient, the left hand side isn't going to change at all. Our right hand side, though, we need to replace these two values. So our omega two is going to become a one half omega one, and then since our diameter isn't changing, we can just write this as d one cubed. Okay, so simplifying this these values here are exactly the same on both sides so we can just cancel them out and our result from that after moving the one half to the left hand side is that our q2 is one half of our original q so if we drop the line down to find out where our current q value was our new q would be half that okay now let's do the same thing for the head coefficient Again, the left-hand side is going to stay just as it is, and then we need to replace everything for the right-hand side. We're trying to find H2, and then we end up with 1 half omega 1, that entire thing squared, multiplied by D1 squared, which again, isn't changing. So again, this is going to go away with our omegas, and then our D1s are gonna go away as well. And this time, after squaring this half and moving it to the left-hand side, we say that 
our h2 is 1 quarter of h1. So to find this value, we come over and see what our current head is. And then we can't half it. We actually have to cut it in a quarter. So this is our original head for this point. And then for our new point, our head is a quarter of the original. So we can find how this, this single point changes based on how these two values change. So this point is going to move down and to the left. I said a couple times that these are happening at the same points on the pump curve. And exactly what I mean by that is that our efficiencies are going to stay the same. So if this is the efficiency at some point A on our curve, well, the efficiency down here is still going to be that same efficiency. So for instance, if this happened to be our best efficiency point for our original pump, then moving down, this point here is still going to have the best efficiency. It's still going to be the best efficiency point. It's just going to have changed both the head and the flow rate. That's for a single point. We can go ahead and do that for a number of other points. And if we do it for all of the points of the pump curve, then we can actually see how our pump curve scales. And our pump should end up scaling something like this. And again, the way we're doing that is we're taking each of these individual points, right? And we're just following the same procedure to move them from the original curve to our new curve. Whatever our point is here, we'll cut the flow rate in half and cut the head by a quarter and find our new point. And once again, our efficiencies of each of these points, if this is some efficiency B, it's still going to be efficiency B down at our lower curve. So our little unwritten rule here is that our A to 1 is going to be equal to A to 2 whenever we're doing this scaling. So this is our new pump that is operating at omega 2 and D2. So that's how we scale our pump curves. We can do this for omega. We can do it for D. Uh, we can do it for both at the same time. Usually what you see whenever you get a pump curve from a manufacturer, it's looking at only one of these things changing, and it'll give you a couple different values. Most often what you see is a change in the diameter. With that being said, let's go to the other way of using these laws. A lot of times we have a pump that has been designed already, and we know that it works well, and we just want to modify the design for a slightly different scenario. So let's say that we have some pump that is already at a best efficiency point, all right? So this is our original best efficiency point. And what's happening for this point is that we have some Q, which we're going to say is 25 gallons per minute. We have some head, which is 10 feet. And then we know that the pump is running at an angular rate of 2,500 rotations per minute and our diameter for this pump is five inches. What's happening here is that we are going to want to maintain the best efficiency point, but our situation is changing. And what we're going to try and do is double our flow rate. So our new flow rate is going to be 50 gallons per minute instead of just the original 25. And we want our head to stay exactly the same. And of course, our aim here is that we're at the same point on the pump curve, meaning that we're following our similarity laws so that we're still at that best efficiency point. Okay, so how do we go about doing this? We're gonna write out our flow coefficient and our head coefficient. And we're gonna do the same thing we did before where we go ahead and substitute the things that we know, right? So our Q2 is exactly equal to twice Q1. So we can say that this is just two times Q1, but we don't know what our omega two and D two are. So we have to leave those as is. And then of course, we also need our head coefficient. So for our head coefficient, our head is the same, but again, we don't know what the new omega and D are. So we have to leave those as is. All right, so just starting out, we can cancel out this Q1 and we can cancel out the H1. 
And then what we're going to do is just try and solve each of these for the ratio. We could plug in all these values, but our units are gonna be really weird. And we're gonna end up with a lot of just numbers that we have to deal with. And it's gonna be a lot easier for us if we go ahead and leave them in terms of ratios. By moving this omega one to the right-hand side, we can say that omega one over omega two multiplied by that two is gonna be equal to D two over D one cubed. Doing the same thing for head, isolating these ratios, we end up with omega one over omega two squared is equal to D two over D one squared. And of course we can just take the square to both sides and just get rid of those squared terms. So now what we'll do is go ahead and take this equation and make the substitution for our omega ratio over on the flow rate equation. D2 over D1 times two, right? That's our substitution here. It's gonna be equal to D2 over D1 cubed. Then getting rid of this ratio means that we have a squared instead of a cubed. And then it's very easy just to take the square roots of both sides. So from this, we end up with D2 over D1 is equal to the square root of two, or D2 is equal to square root of two times D1. Now we can actually plug in some numbers and we get that our diameter of our second pump should be right at 7.1 inches. Now plugging it in back to this equation, we find out that our omega two is gonna end up being our omega one divided by the square root of two. That's pretty easy to plug in as well. And we end up with our omega two running at 1,770 rotations per minute. So we looked at two different situations here where we might use these turbo machine similarity laws. The first of which is just a simple changing our omega, changing our rotational rate, or changing the size of the pump and seeing what happens to our pump curve. And we can just apply these ratios to every single point on the pump curve, and we have pretty good confidence that our efficiency should stay about the same. Now, if you look at manufacturer pump curves, you'll see that the efficiencies change. The biggest reason for that is what they're changing is only the impeller. So you change only the spinning part, but not the outside parts. And that's gonna have some pretty big effects on your efficiency. But if you change the entire thing together, then we should get a lot closer to the efficiency that we expect. The other thing that we can use these laws for is by taking an existing design and modifying it to change exactly what our operating parameters are without sacrificing uh, our good design. We're still gonna be at our best efficiency point, just we're going to be operating under different conditions. So in this case, we doubled our flow rate without changing anything else. And we found that we had to increase our diameter and decrease our rotational rate to maintain that good efficiency that we had to start with. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you learned something new.